Hey friends, I'm Katie with For the Love of Leftovers and welcome back to the kitchen. So today is just kind of a day around the house um, and there might be a bit of a grocery haul in here. So it is payday here, which means we are gonna have a bit of a grocery haul and um, there's some other things that like diapers that we need to get. So we may have a couple stores that we're hitting today thinking uh, possibly Target and Hannaford, which is our local um, big chain grocery store, much like California has Safeway and um, other areas have things like that. We don't have things like Trader Joe's. Um, we do, but it's like an hour and a half away as well as Whole Foods. Uh, we do have a, a grocery chain called Shaw's. They usually have some pretty good deals, so I might actually take a look at the, um, at the app before we go, once we make our list for what we're gonna get. Peanut butter is on the list. Yeah. Yeah, peanut butter is on the list for sure. Um, and I have a list of things that I want to make this week. A lot of them are for the website. So kind of meal planning around that. Um, but we also need to use up things that we, that we have here at home. So let's take a look at the fridge and see what we have to work with this week and kind of base some meals around that. <laughs> so I made some eclairs for a local business and I was going to do creme brulees and I couldn't find what I needed as far as the containers. So I have a ton of heavy cream here that I need to get used. We've got some leftover meat pasta sauce. I've got some uh, apple cider in there. We've got leftover uh, spaghetti back there. Uh, we have someone thinking that that's an apple there and it's not so clearly we need to get some apples. We have some leftover stuffed pepper, We've got a little bit of pesto, a few tomato, uh, not tomatoes, pickles, some egg whites that we need to use up. Let's see what we've got down here. Loads of carrots, celery, garlic, tomatoes, spinach that needs to be used, those Mushrooms and green beans are part of a pork chop dinner that I'm going to do. So those are spoken for in our cheese drawer. We've got mozzarella cheese, American cheese, a little bit of cheddar. Have this uh, Colby Jack that's been in there for quite a while. And I've also got some... Uh, whole milk fresh kind of fresh mozzarella we've got some bacon we've got a bit of feta cheese in here also thinking that'll be good on a salad I'm trying to eat more salads in the door we've got yeast I've got some coconut milk my creamer a little bit of garlic left there a little bit of cream cheese and um, a little bit of cream cheese and butter. Down here we have some salad dressing. We've got some various hot sauces, lemon juice, rice vinegar, this barbecue honey buffalo barbecue sauce, which I got one day at I think BJ's because I thought it looked good. It is way more buffalo hot sauce than it is honey. So we need to find a way to tame that down a bit. We've got some liquid smoke and sesame oil. Over here we have balsamic vinegar, have some barbecue sauce, jam, or peach whiskey jam jelly. We've got some pasta sauce, mayonnaise, sour cream, cashew yogurt, and then up top here we have all of our um, we've got beef tallow, we've got duck fat, we have bacon grease, and then our uh, much needed, this time of year, elderberry and apple cider um, shots for immunity and whatnot. 
and then of course some eggs. This is pretty bare in our freezer here and that's kind of on purpose because um, we have all of our meat downstairs in the big freezers. We've literally got two popsicles left. Um, yeah, those can be thrown out actually. So we've got some chicken breasts there and some English back bacon. This freezer likes to um, thaw and as you can see, has been ruining our floors. So. so that's kind of what we've got to work with. I do have uh, quite a few things still in the pantry. So I'm going to meal plan based on the fresh things that we have in the fridge because those are the things that are going to expire. So we need to make sure that we're using those things up even though that then leaves us with, you know, a, a scant fridge. Rather have a scant fridge where we've actually, you know, um, used all of those things and um, didn't let them go to waste. So it's also a really rainy, dreary day, which means um, the kids are also in rare form. So <laughs> what we get done today is going to be completely dependent upon the little ones that I have at home. And we have a late arrival today, so it's a little bit shorter of a day at school. So I also need to make sure that I'm home for bus pickup. So with all that in mind, let's see what we can get done today. So some things that I have in here that I need to work with in my um, kind of corner cupboard here. I've got some bread. We've got got some hot dog buns, so I will need to get some hot dogs or maybe we can do a um, like a steak and cheese type sub but with ground beef, not steak because steak ain't cheap. Uh, snacks for the kids coming home. We've got some of these pretzel bites. Yeah, we've got some pork rinds. So I'm actually going to, sorry, I hate having these large bags that are pretty much gone. I'm taking up the area um, and I like to have things kind of condensed. So here I have a little snack bin which right now it has mostly treats in it. Maybe I'll change it to a treat bin actually now that I think about it. And I have this um, Speculos cookie butter. Got any ideas what to do with it? I needed it for a recipe and it's just been sitting in my cupboard since. I don't really know what to do. We made some einkorn, um, einkorn cookies the other day. I'm trying not to say that too loud. So we're gonna put that in there. Put the glazed ones in there. So this will become kind of a treat bin. I'm gonna put the speculos in there as well. We made some uh, sourdough discard sandwich bread the other day, so we don't need bread right this minute. And we did make marshmallows the other day. It is still winter here, so the kids have been enjoying some hot cocoa, which probably need to get some hot cocoa as well. Hot cocoa, coffee, we are just like... <laughs> Running out of things, but I mean, that's that's the point, right? We don't want things um, going to waste. So it's better for us to just use things up and be completely out of it than to, than to waste them. Had to get my grabber. I'm way too short. I can't reach things in the back. I think these are more marshmallows. I feel like we have plenty of treats. We have treats and we have real food. We don't have much in the way of snacks, which I guess isn't a bad problem. Yeah, I have a whole tin of the homemade marshmallows here, which smells so good. And I mean, homemade is better than not homemade, but 
they're still, you know, loaded with sugar. <laughs> yeah, we're not having marshmallows right now. So that's what we have in our kind of snack bread drawer. Let's see if I can actually complete a task and get these little pretzel chips moved over. Someone can have them for snack when they come home from school today. So you have to have snacks. Can't, can't have a house with kids without snacks. Most of the time we do popcorn. I have a, um, a big bottle of just popcorn seeds and we just cook the popcorn like that. That's partly because the baby can eat popcorn, um, but he can't have the things on them, right? Like you can't have butter on them. We, it has to be the um, olive oil butter. So like I can do that here at home. I don't trust companies to not sink in those types of things, even if they say that they're plain. Um, you know, there's always that warning on there of like um, maybe made in a factory that contains X, Y, and Z. Not something I can risk with him, not something I'm willing to risk with him. So we've got these for snacks, these for snacks. We've got some fruit cups. Oops. So we're gonna put those in there. I think I might get another bin. All right, so I gotta make sure that I have my list. Um, so we said maybe hot dogs. Okay, so moving things around, cleaning things out, which doesn't take long when you don't have anything, right? But again, this is how we make sure that we actually use the things that we have, is by not having a lot. So we've got bread, we've got buns. I'm going to throw away these bags. Because they destroyed one of the bags of pork rinds already. This is the popcorn that I was talking about. I have gotten bags from um, Amish places before as well. Um, just haven't really been to one of them in a while. So that will go in there. That's a snack that I'm fine with them having. And then we've got our bread right here. We've got to wrap up the bread that we got out this morning. Look how beautiful that is. It's so soft. I mean, it's kind of hard up here, but... It's just a really... This is a really great sandwich bread, and it doesn't... Actually, it doesn't taste like sourdough. It's, um, it's, not, it's not sour at all, because it was the discard, and that's something else I need to do today is do our sourdough feed our sourdough all right let me get this wrapped up and i know i said we need peanut butter we haven't jumped on the bandwagon of ordering from azure and that's in part because ordering from azure here where we live in maine is actually uh kind of expensive it's not any cheaper to get products from Azure or to like travel to Trader Joe's or anything like that. Um, it's actually cheaper just to get it from one of the big box stores around us, which I know there's kind of a back and forth. You gotta strike a balance there of budget and what you can afford and quality ingredients. So am I going to be able to find a 50 pound bag of peanuts, like organic peanuts? at um, Walmart or at our local grocer? No, I'm not. But am I gonna actually, like, is it worth the money for me to, you know, spend $50 or however much it is on that bag of peanuts um, to then make my own? When you're on a super tight budget, it's probably not worth it. And that's okay. Being on a tight budget doesn't mean that you have to eat junk. And I feel like that's a really big misconception is that if you're eating healthy, which is part of the problem with our food system in America is eating healthy has started to cost more than eating these processed foods made from chemicals and um, that are taking shortcuts in the nutritional 
way of the food, right? Like the nutritional integrity of fresh and good food, farm-raised food, um, ungenetically modified things, um, it costs more. And um, that's an unfortunate reality that we have to deal with, um, especially if you're not, even if you are a homesteader or a farmer, you see how much labor and how much it actually costs to be able to make quality and good nutritional items. But I really want to combat that misconception that if you are on a low income, if you are, um, you know, really watching that budget, that that means that you have to get only processed foods or that you can't eat as well because that's just not the case. What you're going to be looking at is you're going to be looking at buying more things in bulk, having a little bit less of a variety when it comes to ingredients and getting more creative, especially when it comes to spices and how to combine those ingredients and maximize the flavor and the nutritional value from each of those individual ingredients. Okay, so let's take a look at what I mean. So one of the things that I'm thinking of and talking about here is like potatoes. Let's use this as an example because this prepackaged potato that includes Idaho potatoes, vegetable oil, coconut and sunflower oil, whey, salt, buttermilk powder, sugar, non-fat dairy milk, monoglycerides, calcium, sterile, lactate, dried onion, natural, natural flavors, uh, parsley, butter, cream, salt, spice, freshness preserved by sodium acid, pyrophosphate, uh, sodium bisulfite, citric acid, and mixed tocopherols. I don't know how to pronounce some of these ingredients, okay? But this was like 99 cents. And now uh, this could vary, this was probably more like, this is family size, probably more like $2. But for $5, I was able to get a five pound bag of russet potatoes. So $2 for one serving for each of my people, according to this, because it's uh, family size, serves eight people, eight servings. So my family is a family of eight. So I can spend $2 on something like this, or I can spend $5 and I can get a five pound bag of potatoes and get them in the crock pot as you see over there. I have the entire bag of potatoes in that crock pot. Whole potatoes, we're gonna do baked potatoes and so I'm cooking them as baked potatoes and then I'll use them throughout the week as different things. So we'll turn some of them into mashed potatoes, some of them into, um, we could do like a twice baked Hasselback. We could do, um, we could use the leftover then mashed potatoes for a potato soup. Like there's a whole lot of ways to then use that bulk ingredient and use it throughout the week. And we're gonna get way more than eight servings. And so we're gonna have a week of a lot of potatoes. That's just how it is. Potatoes are gonna be worked into pretty much each of our um, dinners this week. Uh, let's be honest, that five pounds will probably last us um, three meals. And then maybe a bonus meal because I'll work it into a soup or something. I can work the leftovers into a soup. And that's one of the quickest and easiest ways to handle your leftovers is to turn it into a soup of some sort. But that's something that we have to kind of come to terms with is if you're looking at a minimal budget, I don't have the money to go um, and get a bunch of potatoes and then a bunch of Brussels sprouts and a bunch of like all these different side dish components, right? But I have $5 to get a five pound bag of potatoes. And so those are gonna stretch and we can manipulate them to taste different using different spices. I could make like a nice compound butter using butter that we have and seasonings that we have or the fresh herbs that were in the window. Um, I could uh, make some sort of sauce or I could put salsa on top that we have 
just on hand in the pantry and we could do some sort of like taco potato that sounds really good actually um <laughs> You know, you just have to get creative with it. And so this week, our big staple item, which is, you know, good for us and has the most nutritional value, this is going to give us the biggest bang for our buck by focusing in on that ingredient for this week. Next week might be rice. So then we focus on using rice with all of our meals for that week. And again, then taking those spices and being able to manipulate the taste of just plain rice and uh you know make it go with with the recipes that we're preparing so the long and the short of that is to say if you get creative and use the things that you have you can afford the items with the most nutritional value so in this case a bag of potatoes compared to a package of potatoes, mashed potato, like instant mashed potatoes, it's, it's gonna be more cost effective that way and you're gonna get a higher nutritional value. So working those things into the budget. So that means, let's say the bag of potatoes is $5, right? And then we've got the instant mashed potatoes that were $2, I can stretch that bag of potatoes to go for multiple meals, which is gonna bring the cost per meal down on each recipe and each serving. And that may mean that I don't get to get um, $3 worth of broccoli this week. So I don't get to get $3 worth of broccoli. It's all right if you have a week, um, you know, that you've got one side that you're getting. I would rather give my family a the same side dish for the entire week that has the most nutritional value that it can have instead of making sure that we have so much variety that it results in a variety of processed foods that are going to bulk up our budget they're going to end up costing more for each recipe that we use them in and the nutritional value just isn't going to be there even if you wanted instant mashed potatoes you could get a bag of mashed potato flakes for much cheaper than you can get this instant bag here. All you have to do is um, get some mashed potato flakes. You could also get uh, powdered buttermilk. Walmart sells that and then spices and most people have milk on hand and you can even get powdered milk. Like those types of things you can get and they'll keep in your pantry and then you can have them for nights that you want instant mashed potatoes. And I get it. Sometimes mama needs the quick fix. So here what I'm doing is I've gone through and I've made um, a list of all the recipes that I'm going to do. So I've looked up recipes from um, friends and other bloggers on uh, Google and Pinterest and I've color coded my menu sheet based on the ingredients that I have on hand. So for example, I have a steak recipe. So maybe we're gonna do steak one night and then the next night we're gonna use the leftover steak to make steak quesadillas. So I have those color coded on my recipe, on my little menu sheet there so that I know like first comes the chicken, then comes the egg and you know, kind of doing it in that, in that way and so you'll see, you can kind of see in that lower um, portion of the screen there, just all the colors that they connect with each other. And then based off of those recipes, I'm then making sure that I'm looking at the ingredients and then writing down the ingredients that I need from each recipe um, from the store. And so there's quite a bit on there that I have on hand and that's pretty purposeful and you know, there are different recipes that go together. So, you know, maybe I have a bunch of recipes that utilize a lot of rice. And I had that in mind while I was researching on Google and on Pinterest because I have a bunch of rice already on hand. So that's a cost I don't have to um, incur. And 
you know, we're just going to spread that throughout the meals. It's a good filler, not the most nutritional, of course, but you can get brown rice, you could get quinoa, like you can make these little substitutions to take an otherwise economically friendly ingredient and make it more on the nutritional side. So it's, it's important that you kind of balance that based on whatever it is your family needs right now or whatever the goals are for your family. And you can do both. You can have both. It's just going to take a little bit of balancing. So one of my top tips when it comes to meal planning and picking out your recipes before you go grocery shopping is to meal plan like with like. So find recipes that have similar ingredients. They don't even need to be culturally the same style. You don't have to eat all Mexican food in one week, though why wouldn't you? You don't have to. You can still do various types of cuisines but look at these recipes and see what you need. So if you have um, recipes that need, let's say stuffed peppers, right? So if you're doing stuffed peppers, find other recipes that also could utilize fresh bell peppers. So that way you are sure to use up that ingredient in its entirety during the course of a week. So again, this cuts down on waste, this reduces um, leftovers, this reduces food costs, and will help you uh, maintain a smaller grocery haul and hopefully a smaller budget. Okay, so we are back from the grocery store. It was a bit of a journey. Um, kids had a hard time, so mama had a hard time. And um, we did the best we could. We made some purchases we wouldn't normally purchase, and so the budget was a little um, expensive this time. Let's stay in, I'm gonna show you what we got, and I'm gonna tell you kind of my plans. All right, so we'll start down here. Ground a pound of uh, lean ground beef. They didn't have 80-20, so I went for a 90-10, and that has a recipe that we will use. I am trying to do a little bit better carb wise, not totally keto like my husband, um, but I do want to just try doing a little bit lower carb. So I'm gonna try these out for sandwiches for myself. Pop-Tarts, as you can see, we dug into those already. That was the on the way home snack. Um, we don't usually do cereal, but I did get some kicks and some Cheerios because I'm not a morning person and my kids need a way to get themselves breakfast if I don't have something ready. Snack wise, we got Triscuits. Figured that was probably one of the more healthier um, cracker options as well as, um, what are these? Uh, whatever those are, you know what they are. I can't believe they don't say I'm on there. Graham crackers, oh my goodness. <laughs> graham crackers that's one of the baby's favorite and speaking of babies got some baby arugula and then we also got some baby spinach I plan to use this in egg white omelets for myself as well as a uh, chicken recipe that I have coming up chicken sour cream and spinach and then we're also using this beautiful butter crunch lettuce um, mostly again for myself and I made sure to go on the smaller side this time and I only got two avocados two limes two lemons to make sure that we use them up and normally I would not get sandwich meat because it is such a ripoff when you think about it when you think about how much um, how much you get charged per pound for sliced meat where you could get the actual meat itself at like half the price. Got some brie cheese. This is kind of my, this would be my husband's, um, so I meant to say that this would be my husband's treat because he's, he does keto. Um, so future Katie coming in and telling you about the rest of the things we got, which is coffee and creamer and oat milk for the baby, bacon, 
ketchup and these natural hot dogs. I buy stock out of them anytime I can see them. I absolutely love them. Kids love hot dogs and I want to give them good quality hot dogs. Uh, this garlic herb and goat cheese. If you have not tried this, it is so good. Onions, of course, got to go in everything. And then shrimp. I did have a plan for the shrimp. It's so future now that I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but then we've got chicken. I think I did jambalaya, actually. Chicken and dill. And I find that in the winter, like, I really want fresh like fresh flavors so like dill is oh it's just so so good it makes me think of spring is coming and then we've got the yes so see we've got the andouille there we made the jambalaya i got that chicken apple sausage which was pretty good breakfast sausage links and the kids and i just kind of had those for breakfast one day pesto and sour cream because those are staples in our house i got this starbucks toffee nut we now have a uh, Keurig, and so trying to find good coffees for myself and my husband just helps make our mornings a little bit quicker and easier. These tortillas, hand down, the best tortillas ever. You have to get them. Like, rewind and take a screenshot. They're the best. Potatoes, coconut oil, apples, because we go through apples like crazy. This ciabatta bread, that was the only one that survived. My bag broke as I got home and they went all over the mud. So that's the one shibata that I got. Very expensive. Uh, <laughs> and then more apples. We got grape jelly and of course, mac and cheese. All right, so that's, all right, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. The uh, total, <clears throat> no, I mean, So that's all that was in this grocery haul and feels like a lot, also doesn't feel like a lot. It just grocery prices are insane. Total, we ended up spending $342.87 and that was just on that. That doesn't count the diapers and whatnot that we got at Target today. So hopefully this food should last us the month um, just pairing it with the things that we already have and how we talked about earlier with extending, you know, certain ingredients like rice and um, potatoes and things like that. So we are going to hope that this lasts uh, a good bit at least, you know, two to three weeks would, you know, that, that would be really great. And that would include kind of using everything and using it, it down, using it up. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, follow along because, of course, the next episodes or the next videos, rather, are going to be recipes that we're using these ingredients to make. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.